everyone. I'm uh, Alexis Hope, and this is, I'm Josephine Hoy. And our paper is Hackathons as Participatory Design, Iterating Feminist Utopias. Uh, as a collective, we run hackathons under the name Make the Breast Pump Not Suck, uh, first in 2014 and again in 2018. So this paper um, reports on both events, explaining how iteration uh, on the first led to the second event. Um, not all of our co-authors and organizing teammates were able to be here today, but I wanted to introduce you to them. We have Rebecca Michelson, Catherine Dignazio, Jennifer Roberts, Kate Crontiris, and Dr. Benta Beard. Um, and we also want to acknowledge that this work was made possible by um, the staff of the MIT Media Lab and countless volunteers. So it's a really quite a large project. So we also want to give a nod to prior work within the CHI and ACM community that explore, has explored motherhood in HCI, various breastfeeding supportive technologies, and uh, also prior qualitative research that led to our first hackathon in 2014 that was reported on at CHI in 2016. So our first hackathon was inspired by questions like, whose futures are being considered and invented at institutions like MIT? Who gets to participate in these imaginings of the future? And who is missing? from these conversations. So while a hackathon centering breastfeeding, which is often stigmatized and overlooked in technology spaces, inspired some exciting outcomes of the 2014 event, uh, support for breastfeeding isn't just a matter of technological innovation. Uh, breastfeeding outcomes in the United States are inextricably linked to systems of oppression. So that's what makes it an economic and social justice issue beyond just a public matter of public health. Um, so, 78% of um, parents in the United States are unable to nurse for the recommended six months of an infant's life. And to establish a milk supply, the parent and child must stay close in the first few weeks of the baby's life. Um, this is very difficult in the United States, which is the only industrialized nation without federally mandated paid family leave. Um, only 14% of civilian workers in the United States have access to paid family leave, and they tend to occupy upper income brackets. So while breastfeeding is often presented as a personal choice for someone, whether, whether they want to do it or not, structural racism and other systems of oppression in the United States uh, have rendered it into a luxury good. So uh, it's more easily accessible to privileged families. So as our organizing team of six women reflected on the 2014 hackathons and its limit limitations as an event that was mainly focused on technological innovation, and we revisited our questions and asked ourselves, whose future is being invented, and who is not only missing but excluded from this process, and how can we iterate towards addressing these systems of inequity? So uh, we've been really inspired by this quote from our friends at the Equity Design Collaborative. Uh, Racism and inequity are products of design. They can be redesigned. The main point they make here is that uh, racism and inequity are both intentionally and unintentionally designed into systems and artifacts. Intentionally, when we make choices to uphold or strengthen systems of oppression, and unintentionally when designers fail to reflect on their own positionality or take appropriate action to address resulting bias and assumptions or to include um, the right participants. Uh, we committed to using institutional resources to lift up and connect to work already being done within communities across the United States in support of breastfeeding, and spent a year prior to the event building relationships across many lines of difference, including racial, socioeconomic, uh, geographic, and beyond. So uh, as we built relationships to make this new, broader community possible, we also did a lot of work in thinking about and confronting our own identities. So we're a team of six women, and the four white members of the team started to meet monthly for facilitated conversations around whiteness, privilege, confronting our own roles and propagating racial inequality. Uh, this was deeply uncomfortable work. Uh, we needed to learn to have authentic conversations about the ways in which we continually mess up when we don't consider power imbalances that may not be apparent to us. Uh, there are no easy answers we can provide or a checklist for this. It is ongoing work that is now a huge part of practice for work we uh, take on going forward. So uh, broadly, our work has been rooted in commitments to feminist HCI as a, a now expanding broad field uh, and to honoring modes of thinking and outputs that have been devalued by positivist and solutionist models, um, including uplifting non-technical approaches and partnerships between individuals, institutions, and community as a uh, activists as experts in their own lived experiences and as co-designers. Um, we also want to acknowledge related work exploring cultures of feminist maker and hacker spaces, which help influence the design of the event, and are deeply indebted to feminist scholarship by women of color and black feminist scholars. Um, we believe that as a team that the epistemic and emancipatory commitments of feminism and feminist HCI require that we uncompromisingly adopt an intersectional lens and center the needs and problems of those who are mis uh, most 
disadvantaged, uh, as Kimberly Crenshaw said in 2005. So our work has also influenced by equity, by design, and design justice communities. And for this, we were also very inspired by uh, Shawan Bardzell's work in uniting feminist utopianism and participatory design. So we want to give a call out to some of those influences. Uh, so hackathons have distinct limitations as a participatory model. Uh, they've been widely critiqued for their exclusionary format um, and for propagating reductionism and solutionism. So these are all critiques we contend with. Uh, many remixes and reimaginings of the hackathon have also been offered, uh, for example, by the Detroit Digital Justice uh, Coalition and Lauren Ellen McCann. Um, our 2018 event sought to build on some of these reimaginings, and I'll share a couple of the ways that we did this. Um, first, we focused on changing who was in the room. So in the U.S., hackathons typically attract a mainly young, white, uh, male technologist. So while our first hackathon had many women and babies in attendance, which is pretty rare for a hackathon, it was still largely a white space. Uh, so we changed the way we were recruited and advertised our hackathons so that we could reach new audiences, both a more racially and socioeconomically diverse audience, and also one that included many, many different skill sets beyond just engineering. We also raised significant funds to uh, support the travel of people who otherwise could not attend uh, an event like this because it's one thing to just invite people and quite another matter to make it possible for them to attend. So that was really important. Um, hackathons are typically pretty competitive, and we didn't want our space to feel like that because we wanted to prioritize collaboration and community building and relationship building. So at our first event, we had traditional first, second, and third place prizes. Uh, we changed that with our second event in favor of 12 uh, relationship-based and experiential prizes, things that would help people move their projects along to the next level, um, which also encouraged groups to help each other. Uh, lastly, since hackathons aren't known uh, for producing innovations that last beyond the two days, uh, we focus on making space both for newcomers and new projects, uh, but also finding a way to amplify and support the ongoing work of people out in the world um, who are doing work related to breastfeeding innovation. So this we did through our community innovation program, which was a, an added component to the 2018 event. Um, so we worked with community groups from around the country, uh, for, who were already working in their communities on breastfeeding supportive um, technologies and services and programs. Um, so centers of innovation like MIT and many of our own institutions that you may be coming from often overlook innovation work communities are already doing to make the world better. And we wanted to use our institutional resources instead to uplift and support the critical work that's already being done in the world. Uh, so we worked with these teams for six months prior to the, the hackathon to help them develop some of their existing projects into something um, that they could bring to the hackathon that could benefit from using the resources and people available over the weekend. Um, so each team consisted of talented uh, innovators and passionate advocates for uh, low-income families in their communities in Boston, Massachusetts, Tupelo, Mississippi, Detroit, Michigan, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and hackathons were new um, for members of our community innovation program, and they served as key design partners for us in rethinking the old hackathon model and transforming it into something new that would actually work for them and advance their work. Um, so the second Make the Breast Pump Not Suck hackathon drew about 250 people across uh, all the events. And for about 75% of the people who came, it was their first hackathon. Um, so we really had a great opportunity to reimagine what this could be for people who were not um, sort of used to the trappings of a traditional hackathon. Uh, we really wanted to make it a joyful, playful, and beautiful and welcoming experience for everyone. So I'm going to show you um, some clips of some a little bit about what it was like and some folks in our community talking in their own words about what they did at the event. I think our community innovation teams are like the highlight. We have four community innovation teams coming from Tupelo, Mississippi, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Detroit, and Boston. The Harambe Care is a maternal infant health program. The focus of our design is to ensure that families have access to timely lactation care. We are a nonprofit that works around birth and breastfeeding equity for women of color. What we are designing is a movement, an entire social media platform. We are working on the Lack Pack Toolkit, which is an infant feeding toolkit for disasters. Everybody uh, who wanted to had a 60 second opportunity to kind of tell the audience their wonderful idea and invite other people uh, to work with them. Uh, my name is Camille, and I'm her best friend and lots of my mom. Um, my name is Rachel Lorenzo, I'm one of the community innovation teams that we have our prototypes of And I talked religiously for three months for my metoplets, care for full term. So when that nurse told me she threw away the milk, 
ain't nobody got time for that. I'm excited about what will result and also the partnerships that are formed here and also the friendships and the networking um, and hopefully that will continue after this event is over. I really don't know what to expect actually because one of the, the joys and magic of the hackathon is just that lots of people come together with different ideas and we worked hard to provide whatever materials they might need so there's going to be a sewing station and a 3D printing station and an electronics workbench and a whole bunch of materials but I really don't know what people will do with them and I'm really excited to see what they come up with. Um, Keynote did not show our captions on that video, so if you come find us afterwards, we'll send you a link. Uh, so many amazing innovations came out of this event, uh, way different than the innovative uh, breast pumps that turned out to be too expensive for most people that came out of our first event, because who was in the room was way different than the first time, and the room was full of dedicated people solving problems that they themselves faced or the communities that they worked with had faced. So one of my favorite examples briefly shown in the video um, this is the infant ready uh, emergency feeding kit to support breastfeeding in a natural disaster. Um, so the New Orleans Breastfeeding Center produced this kit and they just shared it with us a few days ago actually. So they've scaled up their prototype from the hackathon into something they're now currently uh, distributing across New Orleans, a city which has faced devastating hurricanes and floods. Um, so we're really excited to see things like this make it out into the world. Um, even though our team includes a lot of MIT nerds, uh, we still recognize that focusing on technology alone will not help solve this problem. So about 25% of people who give birth in the United States return back to work within 10 days. This is not enough time to heal, let alone build up a milk supply for your baby. Um, so to complement the hackathon, we pulled together a simultaneous convening called Make Family Leave Not Suck Policy Summit, which brought together policy leaders to hack paid family and medical leave, which is inaccessible to about 85% of people who give birth in the United States. So our 2018 hackathon was guided by a set of five core design principles, but I'm going to highlight three of them here. So the first was intentionally structuring equity, because equity doesn't just happen, and it's a continual process, not a destination. The event also sought to leverage institutional power, trying to divert the brand and resources of MIT to redistribute attention and resources to projects that are uh, often overlooked by these innovation cultures. And then finally, cultivating a spirit of joy and play was an essential principle for the event because the work of confronting structural oppression and dealing with sexism and racism is daunting in scope and emotionally difficult, and so is living under it. Oppression is not an abstract problem to be solved, but uh, is real human experience and suffering. We recognize that opportunities for joy and play are not distributed equally, but as a strategy of resistance, joy and play can offer both a much-needed respite and an opportunity to connect across lines of difference. Uh, so we made a lot of space for joy and play at this event. Uh, we had a beautiful art exhibition uh, that was showcasing this issue not just from a policy or product angle, but one from human experience. So this space offered folks a critical third space uh, to con connect and converse with one another outside of having to be productive uh, at the event. Uh, we baked 500 boob cupcakes in a variety of skin tones to hand out to our participants. Uh, we had a product expo with 30 companies, large and small, showcasing their innovations all around a baby village where people could hang out with their little ones and have shared child care. Uh, we had a zine library. Uh, and we brought in plants and couches to transform what was otherwise a very sterile tech space uh, because we believe how people feel in their bodies and in a space matters. Uh, so all of these opportunities for play and reflection allowed people to open up creatively and be generative of new ideas and solutions. So the energy and silliness made the weekend a success. Uh, however, uh, our approach to joy and play is reflected in this quote from a terrific book called Joyful Militancy by Nick Montgomery and Carla Bergman. It's for joy to flourish, it needs sharp edges. Um, so what does it mean for joy to have sharp edges? For us, it means uh, that joy must not gloss over anger, pain, grief, uh, in service of so-called harmony. Uh, it means taking a stand and having boundaries, refusing to compromise on certain values. Uh, so in order to create an environment that was truly warm and welcoming, our hackathon had many sharp edges. Um, so we chose to center women of color, uh, which means explicitly not centering white women in our recruitment efforts and in who we selected to attend the event. 
Uh, we asked everyone to uphold a set of community agreements so we could hold each other accountable for how we treated each other in the space. And we began the hackathon with a workshop on equity in order to create a shared vocabulary and understanding of how we might think about and address our own biases in the room. Um, so these were some of the sharp edges that allowed us to make space for joy and play as a strategy of resistance. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and again, congratulations. Oh, sorry. And again, congratulations on the honorable mention as well. Oh. There are things. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ari, I'm also from the MIT Media Lab. Um, thank you so much Alexis and Josephine for sharing this. This is really inspiring to, um, to me. I have a question on, I know you guys are trying to put on another hackathon. Um, what do you think the issues are trying to raise money for something that centers minorities? Um, and sort of how do you get around that? Yeah, that's a great question. Our first hackathon was uh, funded in large part by the Kellogg Foundation, which I forgot to note, so thank you for the opportunity to. Um, we are, uh, we have found that at least for the um, breast pump issue, it was, it's such a niche technology that we got, that all of the companies that are involved with that really wanted to participate um, because it's like the only event that was centered on this piece of technology that is extremely neglected. So uh, one of our strategies is to try and find technologies and, and services that are also more broadly neglected and stigmatized. So as with breastfeeding and our, our next um, hackathon focused on menstrual health. So that's one of our strategies. Thanks. Sanjar Kozubai, Georgia Tech. Thanks again for the talk and such an amazing work. Um, uh, I really appreciated the, the, the strategies that you listed at the end and they, they totally make sense uh, given what you've described in the project. I was wondering if you could list some of the tactics that were used in, uh, in the workshop that would highlight kind of the differences between a typical hackathon and, and then this yeah. kind of work. Was Thanks. there one in particular that you were interested in? Uh, we uh, have, there's any, no, any just of... anything that like, uh, I'm more interested in like, um, you know, s the tactics of framing this... participation of this, these communities. Like specific things we yeah, did like to do. Yeah, like an exercise or, or a, te te a technique mm. or a, yeah. I think it, so I mean, I, the, the core of this work is a year-long process of building relationships with community groups. So I, I'm, in terms of some of these things, I'm not sure I could distill it down to a specific tactic. But for, I mean, for some of these things, like intentionally structure equity, like that, some of our tactics for there were having equity workshop to begin the hackathon itself, which doesn't always happen. So we took an hour and a half outside of the process instead of people kind of jump-starting with, brainstorming ideas, we said, hey, let's take a pause and talk about bias and to talk about equity. So that's one example. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, sorry. Um, if there's any more questions, I'm sure we'd be happy to answer at the end. So thank you again to Alexis.